morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Just Plain Living. I'm John Gray. Good morning, John Gray. I'm Peggy Burton. And I'm Jim Fuller. Ta-da. 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 <laughs> that's all Beautiful we, weather. That's all oh, we got, folks. It's not. It's Beautiful absolutely weather. Absolutely awesome. This is it why is. we live around. Mm -hmm. It's it fall. Is. It's fall. Here. It's clear. There's no humidity. It's the sky is just so blue it hurts to look at it. It is beautiful, night. and we need to appreciate it and enjoy it while we can because how, about how 10 long days. does that last? About we get about usually about ten days of that in the yeah. fall and ten days of that in the spring. I think we've already had ten days of this. We, we've the, had yeah, a lot. So it's which, been that's really good. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. We need it's to rain latch on to it and not let it go. Yeah. Sulfuric acid spill in uh, on the freeway today. Did you see that? Yeah, on the news? Nashville. While I was walking, really? I was thinking, man. That's oh, tough. Yeah. Well, they took and put a bunch of gravel out there on the road. Imagine going down the interstate running about running 70 oh, miles my an hour with, gra with gravel flying up. <laughs> trying to, trying to soak trying it up. To soak it yeah. up. Yeah. Probably wasn't gravel. It was probably more was, of a pug mix type, uh, type That's deal. what I think it was. Yeah. I think it was. Gravel would have really been hard to deal with. Pug mix? Uh -huh. Pug mix? What I is that? I don't remember that. Is that like concrete? It's, 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 a, it's a crushed gravel sort that they use. It's, it's real fine. And it would soak up and it, it was powdery, it, uh, yeah. It's what they used to put in underneath that's usually the last thing that goes underneath asphalt okay before okay. it's uh, that, that where they can really pack that down mm -hmm. real smooth in fact i think and some people what is quarter down uh, do you know what that is huh quarter down or something yeah like that. that's a that's a rock that's about a quarter quarter <laughs> of an inch in size i'm impressed john i mean <laughs> we had I, a, have a little, I have a few civil engineering we, skills we had an many. accounting client one time who was in the paving business and it's amazing how when you do that kind of thing you wouldn't think you would need to know that, but you have to learn the terminology of what they're of doing. What they're doing. I, I don't remember pug mix, but I do remember quarter down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, there's there's just all kinds of stuff like that. We have a great show today. We have a lot of people. We're a little bit going to be a little bit quick on the front end because we have Good. all kinds of guests. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. We just want to remind a few people in Tullahoma, it's homecoming week in Tullahoma. Exactly. In Tullahoma Place, Franklin County, this Friday night. And, and after the game, we'll after next week we'll have our homecoming queen in court in here. Homecoming queen is Caitlin Olive, who is one of ours, oh, works with sweet. us, mm -hmm. yeah. and Coach John Olive's daughter, and a beautiful young lady, and we're very proud and happy for her. Uh, next week, not this weekend. This weekend's a 41A. Right, that's a big deal. Downtown Tullahoma. Dustin Lynch is going to be here. Pop Rocks is going to be here. It's going to be a great two nights. There's no telling. Uh, I was watching city board meeting last night, and they were warning uh, the police chief about Saturday, because there's no telling how many people will be here to see Dustin. To see there's Dustin, will be it'll 10, be, 15, it'll be really, people really crowded. So, are you saying that if if I intend to film anything, that we you might as well you early. might as well just walk from out on <laughs> yeah. Washington? Yeah, yeah, probably so. <laughs> probably so. Of course, we have Andrew will be up in the hotel. Right. Andrew, Andrew gets Andrew a room at the hotel. That's smart. So he can get out on the balcony with his camera and film from up there. But he usually finds a way to sneak in and get some pretty, yeah. some pretty cool yeah. interviews. Yeah, he had some nice interviews last yeah. year, best I remember. So. Speaking of nice things happening, Philip, are you about ready for this? I, I went to the South Jackson Civic Center board meeting the other night, and there was a very special thing that took place regarding our friend... Miss Peggy Burton and I want to go to that video right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is South Jackson Civic Center's annual membership meeting, and tonight's going to be a great night. We'll find out what's going on at South Jackson Civic Center, all the new things that are going to happen, and, and uh, how how well things are going already. I just want to welcome everyone this year to our membership meeting. Thanks for coming out. And before we get started with regular business, I have a special surprise. We'd like Jimmy Lou Smith and Peggy Burton to come to the front. Of the this is a surprise for Peggy that she's been honored tonight. I am. And I was here to do the presentation, and there's nobody that has done more for uh, South Jackson or Tullahoma or Coffee County or the surrounding counties and uh, our youth and uh, and old people too, <laughs> older people should I say. So anyway, uh, I want to present this uh, portrait of Peggy 
to Sam Jackson. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. a month or so ago and I would like to do her portrait and uh, uh, would she send me a picture and I told her a the couple she sent me a little two by two picture <laughs> to do her portrait <laughs> and I meant to do this big you know on the computer <laughs> I meant to do uh, uh, one this size and she deserves that but uh, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't get a, a canvas that size so anyway I tried to incorporate the color so that it would go with Bob that is that so too. sweet oh, so <laughs> And that's Jimmy Lou Smith. Yeah. Yeah. That was nice very for sweet. All yeah. Absolutely. And Jimmy Lou Smith is uh, is a local artist and a member of the Fine Arts Center, and, and right now is a seat on the board at the Fine Arts Center. So. Uh, and one of the uh, exhibitors that you're opening uh, art this, show this, and, this past which was this wonderful. month yeah, is, really is Jimmy Lou. So. Uh, and we just wanted to put that on for you, Peggy, well, because you. we love and appreciate well, I was certain, you I was very certainly much. certainly not expecting anything like that, or I'd have cleaned up a little more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peggy always did good, baby. Hey, and speaking of South Jackson, we want you folks to remember that not this weekend, but next weekend, Valerie Smith will be there with her band on Saturday night to give you a great look into uh, Americana and bluegrass music, and so we want everybody to come to that. And she'll have her band, Liberty Pike. Liberty Pike will be there with her. Great musicians. So did you miss Valerie and Bell Buckle this past weekend because of the stupid meeting you yes. had with Jerry and I? <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. Well, I, I apologize much. for that. That's all right. Uh, you know. Business is important. <laughs> It is, but it had to be boring compared to what you were doing. Valerie to, had to leave and come and do this. I was, so. I was telling them, I, I, you know, news guy, television guy, didn't even take a camera with me. Went down there, and there was this group from uh, Germany that were there that were just absolutely phenomenal players, but bluegrass. But it was completely different because they used different lyrics than normal, and they have written that they had written this song called "Good Night, John Boy," about John Boy Walton. And the guy who produced that show heard that on YouTube, called Germany and invited them to Hollywood to great? play that song for everybody that's still living, the, the cast of the Waltons. And so they were leaving Bell Buckle uh, and flying to, to Los Angeles. And they're one of the people that Valerie has performed with in Europe on right, some of her right. tours. So and it, it was really neat. Her manager, her European manager was there, and there was a television guy who does what we do that I met uh, in in Germany, local, of course, but said he went to about a half a million households. A little wow. bit bigger than us. A little, us. Bit, bigger a little, little bit bigger than <laughs> us, yeah. But what we're going to do right now, folks, is we have a great show ahead. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back with some wonderful information about local things that you can participate in. Be right back. Serving you as a local firefighter. Proudly served our country in the United States Air Force. Serving Tullahoma. Helping our kids. Hi, I'm Terry Stroop. Your comfort is our service. We'd like to thank Tullahoma for the privilege of serving your heating and cooling needs. How can toys like these lead to a six-year-old's death and leave another child permanently brain damaged? Because they're not toys at all. A safety message from your local fire department and this station. Oh, there's my cat. I, should I put her away? <laughs> Lighten it up a little bit. How's this? Great. Good. There we go. <laughs> So you 
you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors, and meet new people, we have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Cove Lake, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Martin Weekly, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, Rugby in the Big South Fork, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at TennesseeTrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. back to living you're going to be glad you stayed because we're going to talk about the ghosts of cemeteries i have on the set with me joanna lewis joanna i think we found Hi. out we might be relatives isn't that great you're my husband and, and you my are grandfather yes uh -huh. and i think that's super tell me a little bit when is the cemetery walk Okay, the cemetery walk is on October the 6th, the very same day that Old Timers Day is happening in Manchester. Oh, that works well. Yes, and our event starts at 5.30 in the afternoon. All through the day you will have Old Timer uh, events going on. Around they the square? Well, they'll have a parade first that's, okay. that starts off on Saturday morning. There's some other events happening on Friday what night. Does it start? Our event starts at 5.30, but... But the parade is during the day. Yeah, the parade, I think, starts at 11 a.m. Um, and they come downtown, the parade does, and downtown they've got all kinds of uh, exhibits set up. They've got uh, all kinds of booths for Parts selling and things maybe. and food and food all that. Eat. Right. And Sounds like fun. Yes, and the Historical Society, we will have the courthouse open that day. Now, I felt it. Uh, say what position you had. What is your position with the Historical Society? I am the office manager the office of manager. the Historical Society. And you all have a, a office where? We have an office in the historic downtown courthouse so of if Manchester. So some information concerning the history of Manchester, Coffee County, um, is that? That's correct, of, of Manchester, Coffee County, families. We have lots of family files on hand. We also have a pretty good library of all the different books that have been published oh, uh, about the area. Uh, we keep census records and so forth. From 1840 wow. forward, we have the census that's very records. That's impressive. And so we have, we have a good collection. We also have all of the... Um, the old Manchester Times that were discarded from, from by Doak, Doak, and we have those on hand, the real copy, a real book that you can sit that and look at. you can actually sit and see what happened. Right. Um, and, when, and when did the Manchester Times start? They start in the, the 50s, and they, they yeah. move up through the 70s, what we have on That's hand. Wonderful. And the, also, we have the Telehomenies. I might be in there somewhere. Oh, you are. You're, you're in there. Don't worry. There's lots of articles about Peggy Burton. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, tell me about the, the walk through the cemetery, some of the things that people do. Right. Do you have someone speaking? And Right. Well, this is our second annual uh, event, and um, we have... Uh, at the very beginning of it, you come up to uh, tables and you buy a ticket. Our tours happen every 15 minutes. And the table is there. It, the table the will be, no. The no, table will the, be over on West High Street. Oh, where the cemetery is. Right. Okay. Uh, if if you are familiar where Mr. Dave King's big house is. Uh, we are normally set up on the pavement out in and front that's, that's of his house. Highway 41 going out of town. 41 sort of. goes out, but you turn off of 41 onto, onto Fort Street and then uh, turn right on church and you will immediately nice. see that the cemetery is ahead. Um, we will have ladies set up that will be uh, selling the tickets. And how much are the tickets? The tickets for adults are uh, $5 for children. Uh, they are three dollars, but if they are not in school, it is free for the okay. children to well, go it's a with you. Wonderful opportunity to get the history of your family and different people that have lived in the area. Do well, you have a, a Civil War area. We will have uh, the Civil War soldiers are buried. Uh, they were uh, soldiers that were actually from Kentucky. They had been. Um, 
injured in the battle at Murfreesboro and they had been brought to Manchester to recover but unfortunately they died, died. and uh, they are buried in the cemetery there's uh, nine or ten of those graves and we have a uh, portrayer uh, Civil War reenactor um, Jimmy Walker and his wife and some others from his group are planning on coming and setting up and bringing some artifacts and different oh, things beautiful. for that uh, it part like a of great it. opportunity to bring your children to get some education. Absolutely. In the of the area. Yes. This is a candlelight to walking tour. Uh, we have uh, candles set up in the little bags. We'll have a um, walkway showing you where to go. And the ROTC group from the high school oh, will be here. conducting our tours. That's so uh, one will be going out every 15 minutes to visit a grave. And at that grave site of, uh, well, for example, Nathan May. And Nathan May is one of uh, the origin original pioneers of the area of uh, Manchester uh, has a really good story so about one will tell that story yes they will we have a, uh, an actor Greg Keeling will be portraying Nathan May and he will tell the story of Mr. May finding a bag of gold oh, in his wow. field interesting uh, that's yes. enough to make me want to go Mr. Uh, an interesting experience it is does. it is Mr. May became a very uh, prominent a uh, gentleman owning lots of property in Manchester and helping to uh, yes move to turn Manchester sure. into mm -hmm. an in, a very industrious uh, town uh, with lots of merchants a very active town um, we also have like Mr. Monroe Gilbert he was a blacksmith and if you're familiar with Manchester, uh, Mr. Gilbert's blacksmith shop is where People's Bank parking lot is yes. downtown, the old um, area there. Um, it, it's just a very interesting time to walk through and see people that have made Coffee County. Yes, but that's wonderful. The very nice place it is. That a place doesn't just happen. That's there right. There has to be movers and shakers behind whatever's going to Absolutely. move forward. Absolutely. And many of them are buried there in the city cemetery because when at that time there was no Rose Hill, there was right. uh, uh, lots are, of people, are people had families. being buried there? Or is it yes, they are. They still yes, being buried there's there. still a section. Okay. They're, they're, we're going to run out of time, so let's reiterate that it's uh, October 6th. October the 6th. There's a big event all over Manchester. That's the right. The parade, the Old Timers Day, and then the Ghost of History Tour. And it's not a ooh, scary tour. No, it is it's not. It's a tour to learn the history of Coffee County Absolutely. and surrounding areas. That's, that's so true. I, I feel like we could talk some more. Thanks for coming. I enjoyed How great it. that is. Don't forget, October 6th, it starts at 5. 5.30. The walk through the cemetery is 5.30. We'll be back with more of Living. It is said that the eyes are the windows to the soul, and the Eye Care Center wants to make your eyes the best windows possible. The professionals at the Eye Care Center have been offering comprehensive eye care for over 30 years. From eye examinations to eye surgery, from children to seniors, we have the services you need. We pride ourselves on taking the time to fully understand our patients' wants and needs. Each patient is a unique situation and deserves our full attention and the latest treatment options. So call or stop by one of our four convenient locations and start seeing better today. All that attention. All you do wanted was Hello, this is J.D. Oliver from the Smokehouse on Mount Eagle Mountain. Me and my sisters Nancy and Betsy would like to thank you all for your continued support. This year we're celebrating our 50 year anniversary at the Smokehouse. In conjunction with our 50 year celebration, we are bringing music on the mountain every Saturday night, 7 p.m. till 10 p.m., featuring the best in Nashville. We have had some wonderful singers, hit songwriters, and Nashville's rising stars have taken the stage. Come out this Saturday night and every Saturday night through the end of the year. Make it a date night or bring the whole family. Help us celebrate 50 years in the community. Music on the Mountain is free every Saturday night at Jim Oliver's Smokehouse. Hey, this is Sean Mayer. I'd like to invite everybody out to the Smokehouse every Saturday night for great music and awesome food. Thank you very much, y'all. 
Some people think that pressing their on-demand button will cost money or make their house explode or something. Of course, neither of these things is true. On-demand is just a way to access thousands of free movies and TV shows. The code to blow up a house is actually channel up, channel down, two star, seven seven. On demand, thousands of free movies and TV shows on your schedule, and nothing bad. All right, folks, we're back, and I have a wonderful guest here today from Kato's, and that is, let me see if I can get this right, Leslie mm -hmm. Lammers. Lammers, yes. Lammers, and she is the district manager for Kato's, and we're here to talk about breast cancer awareness. Yes, we are. Um, I don't know if many of you know, but one woman dies every 15 minutes from breast cancer, and that totals 40,000 deaths a year, which is an you know alarming number. Oh, it, yes. And so, um, as a company, we each year we choose one. I'm trying to think of the word, one event to sponsor. Right, right. And this year we chose the American Cancer Society and we focused in on breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the different stores will choose events to hold within their store. And the Telehoma store has chosen to do a pink event. And this will be next Saturday, October 6th from mm -hmm. 2 to 5. 2 to 5. And that store is located? Uh, in the Walmart Shopping Center. Uh huh. And um, we will have several vendors there. Zaxby's that day will also donate a percentage of their sales to us. And all donations that we get will go towards um, Susan G. Komen. We'll donate all that and we'll have someone walking that in the walk in that the walk they have in Nashville. In Nashville. Yeah, yes. Very good. And uh, Joan Peppers is the manager of that store. Joan Pepper is the manager. We she couldn't be her. there today. We love Joan to death. <laughs> yeah, she's she, wonderful. She was at, uh, we of course did the city board meeting, she was, and she was at the city board meeting last night and mm -hmm. received a proclamation yes. signed by the mayor. Yes. And we thought that was just great. That is. Uh, Cato, how many, how big, how big a deal is Cato? Are you, is Cato nationwide? Cato is almost nationwide. We don't go um, all the way west. We stop in Arizona uh -huh. and then we go over. We have like a few stores in New York, but we're pretty much southern based and we go up Michigan. But right. we have about 1,300 stores and two other divisions that we operate. It's fashion and um, Versona accessories. Mm -hmm. And that's located in Murfreesboro. And so uh, in this general area right here, how many Cato stores do you have? Say like in lower middle Tennessee. In our Lower coverage Middle area. Tennessee, I would say around 50. I would say. I really? mean, we have quite a bit of stores you can well, that's reach within. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yes. And so each store gets to pick their their uh, nonprofit or their their thing that they want to fund. Exactly. And uh, and. Uh, Yes. And then have a fundraiser and do that. And that's wonderful uh, that you picked breast cancer. My wife is a 10 year survivor. Oh, that's awesome. We're so. going to have um, a fashion show that day also where uh, we will have models who are breast cancer survivors. So I think that's a great way to get the community involved and to get other people that have you know, survived breast cancer to model around the store and show everyone what we offer at Cato. Well, my wife Fran and Joan are buds, so that wouldn't surprise me if she Fran might wasn't be a model, model that She's day. probably going to be modeling that day, and if she's not, we'd love to have her. <laughs> so, yeah, she to be probably in will be because we get we get quite a bit of stuff there. I enjoy shopping there. Well, we appreciate your business, yeah. and Mayor Curley will be there um, at five o'clock. We'll do a balloon release uh -huh. to. Um, to represent all the women that have died or survived breast cancer. So we'd love for everyone to come out and join us. Well, we're so glad to have you. And where are you located? Where's your home? I'm Actually, I live in Hillsboro. So my home base store is with Joan here in Tullahoma. And this uh -huh. is the store I started out as a store manager. So um, just like and home to me. how many stores are you over now? I have 10. I uh, range from Murfreesboro, everything in between, to Chattanooga. OK. So right. I run up and down 24. There you go. <laughs> yes. OK, Leslie, that is, that is the event at uh, 
Kato's? Kato's. It is. October 6th. October the 6th, which is next Saturday. Yes, we'll have some uh, giveaways every 30 minutes, um, door prizes and stuff for anyone attending. Also, we will have raffles and a few um, items you can bid on, such as I heard you talking about Dustin Lynch earlier. I know he's a big <laughs> star around here, and we did get him to autograph um, a few items that we will be raffling off. So we'd love for everyone to join yeah. us. Well, we will see that. We will try to get there with a the camera and maybe get a little news oh, article come. about that. Come on by. We'll have yeah. other vendors from around the area. So. Mary Kay um, people, Avon, I believe some 31 people will be by. So it's a big community event. Um, Harton will be there talking about breast cancer to give you um, just information on how you can prevent that. So right. a lot of people are going to be involved. Well, we appreciate you coming and being with us this well, morning. Thank you, John, we're for glad having me. that We're glad to help serve you and help you in your cause. Well, thank and, you. And uh, we'll be there on the 6th. And folks, you don't forget that because this is a very, very, very important thing. It's Breast Cancer Awareness. And this is the event at Cato's. And that will be a week from Saturday. And we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> I went to several colleges, but when I stepped into this gym, it just felt like home. Just learning the different techniques and the way Mr. Bryan tells us how to study the subject, art, that's where it's really at for me. I decided to go to nursing because I've always wanted to help people. You make those connections that you probably never forget. This is my motto, my future. I'm Marley Matlin for the American Red Cross. In an emergency, infants and children can't always tell you what's wrong. Being able to read critical signs and knowing how to respond can make all the difference. The Red Cross offers infant and child CPR training where you can learn how to recognize and respond to respiratory and cardiac emergencies. Visit www.redcross.org or call 1-800-HELP-NOW. Together, we can save a life. for things other people get right away just doesn't make much sense. Get high-speed charter internet and enjoy downloads way faster than DSL. Welcome back to Living. I am so excited today to have two wonderful guests, David Pate and Ron Fuller. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. And Thank you. I know that you're with Contact Lifeline, and I know there's a lot to tell, so let's tell quickly what Contact Lifeline is. Contact Lifeline is a 24-hour crisis line, reassurance line, and team-to-team -team line to help folks who are in crisis. We're there 24-7 to give support and a listening ear to anyone in our four county area. We serve 455-7133 is the Coffee County line. 967-7133 is the Franklin County line. And is that just listed in the phone book as contact lifeline? Can yes, ma'am. They okay. can. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, we have a number of services, as I mentioned, and one of those is reassurance. We, we contact those who are shut in, elderly, disabled, every day to check up on them. I think that's a marvelous it is. thing to do. It, it I may be using that myself one of these days. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that that's out there. Yes, ma'am. We're here, and the uh, contact is over 31 years old serving this area. Do you know who started that in, in the Tullahoma area? Not that it really matters, but... It, it was a wonderful service. Are you, am I the one that needs this? Oh, okay. It seems that my microphone's not working today. So here I am with this microphone. Okay. You're going to have uh, an event. Is that correct? Well, we're, we're publicizing the suicide awareness coming up for the holidays because the holidays begins in uh, late October, November, December is when we start seeing a spike in the uh, anxiety, depression, and suicide rates across our area. You know, I've often wondered, does it have to do with the, 
time change and the days being shorter and or is it just the holidays themselves that the hol cause the this? holidays is a spike but we we see uh, these issues coming up all over our area every day of the week every month of the year are there any uh, things that family members should look for if people are suicidal are there any triggers there's a lot of things that needs to be looked for one uh, is are they despondent are they pulling away from the family are they depressed uh, are they giving away things that are precious to them are they making comments do they actually say things like I'm going to kill myself they do and yeah. some people say that oh they're just talking well I wouldn't want to bet their life on just talking you, you, you need to pay attention people to need signals. to know they need to take action I would rather them be safe than sorry take an of action course. check it out don't sit back and assume that they're okay right, That's right. So, so, so what are some of the actions well, that you well, think a family member would take Ron? well one of the things is just is to be vigilant as he was saying yeah you want to be vigilant about these things uh, particularly if a person's also isolating themselves Many times they'll they'll just withdraw, withdraw from, from that. They, they they want to be there and provide some support. They want to be there and provide by support. I mean a listening ear, not necessarily not necessarily a lecture, but a listening ear. Someone to listen. We live in a world where people are 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 just craving someone to simply listen to them. People don't feel like they're significant enough for anybody to listen to. And if you can make people feel significant, like they're a part of everything, exactly, that makes them be a part. Yeah, I think sometimes people forget the social part of healing to the individual. And that's, that's right. not necessarily running out and having a big party, but to sit down and have a conversation. And if you're lonely and despondent, that's what Contact Lifeline has to offer. That's, that's an excellent observation. That is a, on your part. That's an excellent observation. That's exactly right. We have to be vigilant, and that's why contact was uh, was established over 31 years ago to uh, serve this area. The the four county area is Bedford, uh, Coffee, Moore, and Franklin. That's a large, wide area. Do you have any idea how many people you actually contact? We have your people we, contact. Uh, I know you don't. Do we've it all had personally. over 12,000 so far this year. That's amazing. And are you Isn't always it? looking for volunteers? To we have volunteer opportunities that are terrific. Not only can you help somebody else by being that listening ear, by that help caring yourself, person listening, you? but you can enhance your own knowledge and understanding. As you asked me the question a minute ago, what can you do? Well, this very training. Will show, will show and tell you what you can do and really enhance your abilities to relate to people exactly. as well. So if you are interested in being a person that is on the other end of Contact Lifeline, you need to contact the facility That's right. and have some training yes. because not everybody really knows exactly what to say and sometimes they'll just say nothing. Yes, is that we, not we have a great training program it's fun and exciting uh, for all ages. We ha we train teenagers from 15 to adults up to 80 uh, that we have working, and that the training is uh, 20 hours of of classroom training and 12 hours of uh, apprenticeship working with someone on That's the phone. Awesome. So you're not by yourself. And this training is probably some of the best you'll find anywhere. Uh, it's been certified training all over the country. So this works for everybody at every age and you don't have to feel out uh, outgunned so to speak when somebody calls you will know how to handle it and we'll make sure of that and you'll enjoy feeling that you have made a difference in someone's life you know one of the greatest stories that I've heard come out of this very kind of thing you'll notice that David said from 15 to 80, to 80 oh, okay yeah. We had, because of our teen to teen program, we had a teenager there. Of course, there's always a supervising adult there. Right. But a teenager took a suicide call. Oh, wow. And you can imagine, and they said after it was over, they were so amazed at what they had been able to do because their training kicked in. I've heard so many people in the military say when they come under attack, suddenly their training just kicks in and they carry it through and, and do they what they were trained through. to do. This young person, their training kicked in, and she was, and they were, they were able, able to make a difference. To make a difference. That's beautiful, isn't it? And do you find that people that are actually suicidal, do they call? 
Or does somebody have to call for no, they, them? A lot of times they'll call. They're they? reaching out for help because they're so in such despair. That's and with contact wasn't there, I think uh, our statistics show there have been at least four to six people already that would have committed suicide. That's wonderful. And of course you don't have to be ready to commit suicide. No. There are many other reasons that you need to call Contact Lifeline. I know there's a lot of people that I know that really don't have any family here. Mm -hmm. I'm older, exactly. they're older, and sometimes they just need some reassurance that they make a difference in this yes. world. And there's, right. a, there's an event on October the 5th in Franklin County, Walk Out of Darkness, that we're going to be helping with a little oh, bit. Good. And people can come by and see us and talk to us personally, one-on-one, -on -one, and see if they would be uh, interested in, in talking further. October 5th, further. what time does it start? 5 p.m. at the Franklin, mm -hmm. old Franklin County High School uh, football field. Okay, at the football field, we October got, 5th. Uh, artists from Nashville are going to be there. It's going to be a big event. Oh, it's going to be a big Big, big event. event. Yes, ma'am. So everybody will enjoy it. You don't yeah. have to be despondent. You need no. to just that's come right. and learn about the no. what's going on. That, There's correct. so many reasons, I think, to encourage people to understand Contact Lifeline and to offer up a suggestion to someone that you know is depressed or out of sorts. Or do you have any last words we need to say? Well, there's there's always a funding situation. Funding Being is chairman always of the board, you can understand that I'm <laughs> interested in that. Absolutely. Uh, there's always a funding thing, and while we are in some united ways, uh, only a little less than 18 percent of our funding comes through. So that you venue. will take uh, donations at we, any time. We absolutely. So if anybody will. wants to write a check, they write it to Contact Lifeline, contact Lifeline. and contact your office. Right. Yes. It's all tax deductible, and uh, it's the greatest bang for the buck. Great. Yes, if we had to pay the people who are volunteering, you can imagine what a budget oh, of would be. Course. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you do. Thanks Thank for you, being here today. Thank you, ma'am. Keep Thank up you, the good work. Thank you. I'll go get my microphone fixed. <laughs> okay. <Look> back. <laughs> Citizens Tri-County Bank has the checking, loans, savings, and traditional banking services you want. Plus free internet banking and bill pay. Bank your change, Visa gift card, and lots more state-of-the-art banking services. We focus on the service and services you want. So you can bank when, where, and how you want. At our offices, or from just about anywhere. Citizen Shry County Bank, the only community bank you'll ever need. This facility was built literally on the international dateline to bring charter customers tomorrow's technology first. Like Charter Internet which was just made faster again. With speeds up to 100 megs, you can download a movie in two minutes. The number one internet service provider in the nation. Click. Fogelman, good luck with the presentation tomorrow. Already nailed it. Get Charter Internet Express for only $19.99 a month. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're pleased to have joining us on the set now Dr. Ed Lawson from Lawson Holistic Chiropractic Clinic here in Tullahoma, who is here today, and, and he was talking briefly with me before uh, before we came on the set, and I thought, Ed's done went political on us, and this is going to be a political <laughs> statement today. But as it turns out, it's not quite that. And, but it does it's a take health it, statement. But it does take us to an interesting place here. Right. And, and you're, you're going to talk about today, Ed. Go ahead. Okay. So... Um, what I learned this weekend when I was at a seminar, because this is really important to all of us, um, is that, did you know that baby boomers are retiring at a rate of 10,000 a day? That's a bunch. 10,000 a day, right. And Congress passed a law, they don't have to report a couple of programs that uh, is involved in our national debt. Okay, so that is Medi Medicare and another one, it may be Medicaid or something. Anyway, so instead of being 16 trillion in debt, we're actually 64 trillion dollars in debt. Okay, and at the rate of 10,000 a day, when when the baby boomers peak, Medicare will account for 52 trillion dollars of our national debt. There's no way we're going to be able to keep up. No way. And um, what's going to happen? It, it doesn't matter who's president. They're not going to be able to stop it. So this is not a political statement. This is no, just this a, is a this is an fact. alarm. Yeah, right. this is a okay. fact. Right. This is happening right now in the next four years. I wouldn't want to be president. I don't. I don't. Whoever's running, they're crazy. 
is they're not going to be able to stop it. There's nothing they can do. Anyway, so aside from that, their answer to, medica to the health problem is to increase ac seniors' access to pharmaceuticals, right? They did it a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. and, um, but all those have side effects. You know, they're, they're trying to throw drugs at incurable diseases. So what's the cure rate of hypertension? Uh, zero. Yeah. And, and the cure rate of arthritis? It's zero. So the answer is not increased pharmaceutical because that's going to just continue to draw money out of our system. The answer is to support us not to have the problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so how do we do that? I'm going to guess, knowing you, that it's probably had something to do with diet. But yes, <laughs> it does. But okay, uh, now Michelle Obama, people are going to say, oh, that's crazy. But Michelle Obama had was on the right track. What she was trying to do was change the subsidies of corn, of grain, of corn and soy to vegetables because mm -hmm. we do not eat enough vegetables. You know, if everybody today wanted to eat vegetables at the right amount, there would not be enough to feed us. No kid. No, there's not enough because, you know, that's not how we roll. Right. We're rolling with grains and that's what's killing us. Yeah. The number one health care problem in America, and it's even worse in Kuwait, it's at 88% in Kuwait, in Kuwait. Number one health care problem in America is in, uh, insulin uh, insensitivity. We've lost our sensitivity to insulin, and that accounts for 69%. That causes all of our incurable diseases. In, well, I mean, you, insulin, you think diabetic, but it's more than that, right? Right. The insulin controls how sugar gets into your cells. So that's one of the things that causes Alzheimer's. If sugar can't get in the cells in the brain, the cells die. It creates those uh, neural t tangles, those protein tangles in your brain, and you get Alzheimer's. There's a there's an easy fix for that too. Yeah, you can get someone out of bed with it. Just give them coconut oil four times a day. Coconut oil. Yeah, and what happens is it's a medium chain fatty acid. It goes right into the liver, converts to ketones. Totally bypasses the sugar thing. Okay, so why do you why do we have to have sugar to make ATP to make energy to drive the cells? Well, these ketones go right into the brain cells, make ATP. No sugar involved. And this is coconut oil like you buy at the store? Yeah, you know that, you know, it's thick at room temperature. In a can. In a jar. No yeah. cans. Yeah. Okay. Cans are toxic. You, you don't want to eat anything out of a can. Oh, okay. All right, so back on to what we were talking about, uh, the incurable diseases. Okay, I told you I was going to give you a quiz, right? Yeah. Okay. He promises me, promises me I'll fail this. Yeah, he'll fail. Okay, so <laughs> how many calories are in cholesterol? Uh, none. Dude. All right, none, no calories in cholesterol. What is cholesterol? I have no idea. Okay. It's bad for you because it builds... Uh, it's it builds, not. It's not bad for you. No. Cholesterol is a hormone. It's not a fat. Cholesterol is made from what? Basically. Cholesterol is made from carbohydrates. Yeah. So putting people on a low-fat diet makes them worse. And that's been the medical so approach. So putting them on a low carb diet will help. Will help. Actually, probably a no carb diet. I, I asked you this one time: How come it's I, I lose weight when I'm on doing low carb diets, and yet it, I don't have high cholesterol or those kinds of things? Right. Yeah. Because I would think if you that live you long would. enough being on this road, you would. Yeah. Okay. So why? Why? What's the cholesterol deal? What's your body trying to do? It is trying to protect you from inflammation. Mm -hmm. So it produces more cholesterol trying to protect your body from the injury of inflammation. So it starts putting it in your arteries trying to protect your artery walls from inflammation. And that's what, that's what happens. So Which you resolve it. clogs your arteries? Yeah, the, the cholesterol does. So it, it, it attaches to sites that are inflamed. So if you address the inflammation, then the cholesterol stops doing that. Now, Linus Pauling won a Nobel Prize for his work with vitamin C, and that was his whole mechanism, was you give people vitamin C that addresses the, the inflammation in the arteries and the, and the veins, and then things calm down. I think he's still alive, by the way. All of his, uh, yeah. all of his uh, um, people who spoke against him are dead. So that should tell us something, right? Yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah I would that say. should tell us something. Anyway, so if someone's putting you on a low-fat diet, don't do it. Not good for you. Not good for you. Oh, okay. Now, you, you, you got to choose good fats. That's very important. You know, like avocado's a good fat, butter's a good fat, margarine is a bad fat. Bad. It's a trans peanut butter. Fat. Peanut butter is off the list. No, no legumes. No. Yeah. No. If you want to, okay. There's 200. There's almost 250 
populations out there who are still eating the ancient way, like paleo diet. Uh -huh. um, and guess what? They have all their teeth. They have no cancer, no heart disease, no diabetes, and no arthritis. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, so, so what they're eating is meat and plants. Uh huh. Okay. So, of the plants, you eat one third meat, two thirds plants, and of those plants, you have uh, seventy five percent vegetables and twenty five percent fruits. You can eat the only kind of granny type thing that's allowed is wild rice. Now you you've lost a significant amount of weight over yes, the last. Yes, I'm down to 32, which is unbelievable. And yeah, see, I'm see, so I, happy. I see Ed every month, so you know I've noticed this. But <laughs> so is that a result of you following this plan? Um, that is the result of me listening to what I told a patient uh, several months ago. Mm -hmm. I said you have to be okay with being hungry, or you won't be able to get weight off or keep it off. And you you mentioned that the last time you were here yeah. that you were learning to. You're learning that it was okay to be hungry. Right. And you need to be hungry when you quit eating, when you're sitting down. If you eat till you're full, you've, ate, you've eaten too long. Right. And you're too full. And all it's going to do is just convert to fat. And the choice we make. I make a lot better choices now because what I put in my body has to count. So I don't eat hand, uh, candy bars anymore. I don't buy any kind of junk food. I'm just, you know, if I, if I put it in my mouth, it's pretty healthy. Unbelievable, and that takes a, a lot of discipline. And well, surprisingly, it doesn't because I just decided to do it. See, my dad did this when he quit smoking. He woke up coughing one morning and said, this is ridiculous, threw the pack down and never touched him again. I did the same thing with Cokes about 25 years ago. Yeah, my doctor, or my former doctor, told me that he did that a couple of times. He'd, he'd be driving down the highway uh, smoking, and he'd be coughing, and so he'd throw them out the window. But then he said, I'd get down about two more eggs, and not stop by me another pack of cigarettes. He ultimately had a heart attack, so he doesn't smoke anymore. Oh, but, good. <laughs> but, yeah. But, uh, it's, yeah, smoking's bad. But, it ages uh, us too fast. But hey, you know, we've we've got about a minute left, Ed. So uh, I, this is a really different lifestyle than a lot of us are used to. Right. So right. It, so well, see, we haven't been taught how to eat healthy. Right. We haven't been taught that you know uh, putting people on cholesterol medicine like statin, uh -huh. like uh, Lipitor, it increases your chance of getting diabetes uh, seventy one percent. So you know uh -huh. what happens? Uh, they lost the patent this year. Yeah. So instead of, and the FDA was going to make them put a label on that, saying that, so they quit making it. I said, I oh, forget it, we don't want to yeah. make it anymore. Yeah. So, and, and, then, and then the other thing is, you know, hemoglobin A1C is your test for, uh, the best test for blood sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Did you know for every 1% it goes up, your cancer rate risk goes up 18%. Oh, that's... A and what controls that? Carb diet. Yeah. Grains. So if you want to fix your hemoglobin A1C, you got to go grain free. You still get carbs because diabetics have trouble with that. They've yeah. got to keep their blood sugar right. But you get off the gluten and you may get control of your diabetes. You get all, no grains. I have a patient, she's neuropathy for over 20 years. All the feelings back. That's, that's unbelievable. And she's a, 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 a juvenile diabetic, which is pretty bad. Now, the, the, you've been seeing that number for Ed's clinic up on the screen there, so there you go. So now, I'm, sh I'm sure that if someone would like to, to pursue this, it's a little bit more complicated probably than maybe what you just mentioned. But if they uh, came by your clinic, you gave them an evaluation, you can explain to them in detail right. how, how to go through right. this process. And the most, so, I mean, what happens is when we start eating that way, we address free radical, free radical damage. Uh -huh. And um, that's one of, actually, Actually, uh, free radicals, uh, catecholamines, are produced in the body and that causes free radicals. And there's a whole thing that causes free radicals, okay? Right. Reactive oxygen species. Right. And catecholamines are the worst ones. And they're produced by misalignments in your spine. And the best way to get rid of them is an adjustment. Okay. And that, that's like number one. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Come see me. I'll help you. And you can learn all about that at Lawson's Holistic Chiropractic Clinic on Maple Hill Drive in Tullahoma. Dr. Lawson, Ed, thank you so much for coming by. Hey, it's great to be here. Always interested. Yes. Okay, folks, we'll be right back in just a moment with more living right after these messages. <laughs> You've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. 
<laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay him a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Parton Regional Medical Center. ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. <laughs> Get your news first, fast, and free with your News Leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. When you see the sign, The Main Event, take a close look inside at a hair studio that offers services by some of the best master stylists in Middle Tennessee. These stylists offer a list of services that compete with large city salons, from trendy cuts for men, women, and children, to the latest color techniques, including highlights and bold color accents. Other services offered include permanent hair weaving and relaxing to formal hairstyle for that special occasion. You can also give yourself a very special treat with a full makeover including full body waxing. For your convenience, we are open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. until the last client leaves happy. Call and make your appointment at 931-571-8682 or stop by our Telehoma location at 207 North Jackson Street. Pamper yourself at the main event today. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. All right, folks, welcome back. It's the time of year when the sky gets clear and crisp and the leaves start to turn that we think of the sportsmen's uh, and businessmen's and all of those great things that they do. In, uh, and we have Carla Bloom with us today and we have Carter Sane with us today. And well, they're getting ready to kick off and talk about the activities of the Sportsman's and Businessmen's Foundation Fund. What, what's the exact title? The Sportsman and Businessman's Charitable Organization. See, How about that? I knew that. <laughs> It gets fall and here we are. <laughs> here you are. <laughs> and it's a mouthful. We, we never have thought to change the name to something a little bit more um, reasonable. But we do, we've, we've abbreviated now to SBCO, Sportsman's and really? Businessmen's Charitable. SBCO. Chairman. Yeah, that, we try to go with that some so that it's maybe quicker. Yeah. But. But. <laughs> so, <clears throat> here you are. How many years is this now? 29. 29 years. Are you kidding Carter me? Carter was this big. <laughs> and Carla was this big. <laughs> but we were there. Yeah, yeah y'all were running around with balloons in your hand, weren't you? That's right. Yeah, we were serving the, the cold drinks out of the Coca-Cola trailer and, um, and, and watching the turkey shoot go on at the farm. Uh -huh. And we, um, w we did that for 20, 25, 20, 22 years yeah. at the farm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, it was a great event. Out a great there. event. Sure you know, what a wonderful place. Games yeah. for the kids uh, there was it was an all-day event that uh, started much as an, it was an accident the way the the thing started uh, you know they uh, that they started this thing on more of a, a, a bet really that hey let's let's buy something and raffle it off and see if we have any money left we'll just give it away and um, and sure enough they, they they did that and it was successful about right. 16,000 right. that first year right and uh, and they didn't stop doing it. They just, they ju we, because we were, we yeah, were involved we were really early weren't. on. Sure. We weren't the decision makers. We were the laborers. Uh, but we kept on doing it. Right. And now 29 years later, it's helped thousands of people. Uh, how, it, how much, do you have a total of how much money has been raised in the 29 years? There's not. No, I, I wouldn't be able to venture a guess, but uh, some easy math would be we made it into the, to the, uh, we surpassed the $100,000 mark annually in fundraising um, 
probably 15 years ago. That's incredible. And prior to that, uh, you know, we, we would have uh, 50 to 100 thousand right, dollars a year. Right. So, uh, you know, we've we've a bunch. We've been fortunate enough that the community has supported us with millions of their dollars, and um, probably at least a couple. Yeah. And uh, and. And we've helped thousands of folks in coffee and surrounding counties. Right, right. Now, where is the event held now? It's held at the Manchester Conference Center. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's the biggest venue that we have in this area. So, and it keeps us from having to worry about whether it's going to rain, rain or, or snow. Rain. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Or what the day is actually going to be like. Right. So, it's an evening event. It starts at five o'clock, and um, we. We do a lot of the same kinds of things. We still have a silent auction. We mm -hmm. still have a live auction. We still do our raffle, and we have fabulous food, just like we and always entertainment have. Entertainment as yes, well. Yes, we do. We do. Um, the entertainment is going to be the same as it was last year. Um, we're going to do the ultimate oldies. Ultimate oldies the ultimate yeah. oldies um, hit the scene uh, in this area last year and right. just really, um, really wowed the crowd. Right. Uh, sold out shows and right. uh, my dad became friends with those folks and has known them for a while and was able to uh, to, to bring them over and uh, and again put they put on a spectacular show something different than we had done in the past right. we'd been doing some country and uh, classic rock type uh, type bands and and again this year the ultimate oldies will will entertain everybody and I think uh, everybody will be very pleased with that. That's, and everybody that's really enjoyed the show. Oh, I yeah. mean yeah. every age group really enjoyed it. Well, those those songs are songs that no matter who you are, you like them mm -hmm. because they 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 have they're musical. Right. That's right. They're musical and and a lot of I know my son Jacob who's 29 years old when he was in high school there really wasn't the music that was there was more of a, a chest banging it was more of a rhythm, just rhythm. Mm -hmm. There was not much vocalization involved. Right. And so he he went back and found some of those songs that are dance. He likes to dance. Those danceable tunes. Right. And that's what people love. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you look around the room and everybody's tapping their toes okay. oh, and yeah. smiling and singing. Time. And that's what it's all about. And meeting friends and talking <laughs> about things. And it's, yeah. it's uh, when is this event? It's November 3rd this year. November the 3rd. Mm -hmm. November the 3rd. It's always the first Saturday in November. Um, at least it always has been that way right, for the last right, 10 years. Right. And so it's the first Saturday in November. November 3rd, it's 5 o'clock at the conference center. And um, folks that want to attend would want to call Carla at 931-212-6045. Mm -hmm. I believe is her cell number. And it's on the screen. On the screen. And it's on the screen. Um, you know, the thing about our event... What about people who want to help? People that want to help. That's the thing. Our event... Not only the night of the event does it offer so many different things for you to do, auctions, live auctions, um, the entertainment, the food, and the fellowship. There'll be 500 people at this event as guests and another 30 or 40 um, you know, folks hosting the event. What do you do to help? We have a raffle for a $5,000 grand prize. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something that we've been doing since er the early days of this organization. Tickets are $25 a piece mm -hmm. or five for 100 and we also have a live and silent auction. So if you have goods uh, that your business um, produces or sells, right. or if you want to go out and buy something to donate okay. to our organization, that Call me. you'll do it. Call me, she says. <laughs> That's where we make what we're going to do is we're going to have them on here again in another couple of weeks to yep. uh, talk about this a little bit more. But it's time to get it on your mind. And if you, if you want to help or want to be involved, call, call Carla. And uh, she will absolutely take your money, take your product, sure. figure out a way to get you involved. And we appreciate both of you for what you do Thank you and so have much. done for years to help the people in our community. And that Great goes right back at you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, folks, we'll be back after these messages. Times have changed since Traders Bank first opened our doors in 1889. Back then, online banking meant people were waiting ahead of you. And technology? The word hadn't even been invented yet. Even though banking has transformed over the years, at Traders, one thing has never changed. Friendly smiles, a neighborly hello, and a sincere appreciation for our customers. When a Traders employee says, you're welcome, you are, and you always will be. Traders Bank, you're welcome. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. These are the children who had no chance. They're known as Brazil's street kids. They wander the streets dying by the thousands from drugs, AIDS, and bullets. 
most of them have been abandoned, left to survive on their own. These children needed a place to go. I had to do something. So I brought it up at Rotary. People heard about what we were doing and asked how they could help. Together, we raised funds to give them a home and open the school. They're learning a trade. Now hundreds of kids have a family and a future. They're contributing to the community because Rotary believes in making things better for everyone. Rotary is making a difference right now. They have hope. Rotary gives people an opportunity to help. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and it is my pleasure this morning to be talking to the chamber chick, <laughs> Diane Bryant. <laughs> and one neat thing about the chamber chick is that Diane not only uh, you know talks the talk, but she walks the walk as well. Because yesterday, oh. you know, she is very interested in in, tel in Tullahoma and promoting Tullahoma. And yesterday, I was on the phone and didn't get to talk to her, but I looked out in front of my place of business on North Washington Street, and there's Diane out there picking up trash. Because <laughs> have you guys adopted we that section? Have, of we have adopted that section of Washington Street and I was joined by Renee Keene, our president. She was across the street on the other side right. and then we had the, the bulk of our we had several of our board members and ambassadors that were down under the um, the the overpass so yeah. we were we were all along that area. Okay well I, I was impressed <laughs> and you guys were doing a very thorough job. I we were think. we okay. were well I'm excited to know that you saw us so I that's did, very I, good. I appreciate you doing that. Well we've <laughs> earned our second star on our sign so that's yeah. that's where we're going for the four stars. So. Yeah, to earn the star, you actually have to get out there and do the work. Yes, right? you do. Yes, okay. yes you do. <laughs> You're here today, however, to talk about other chamber events and uh, tell us what's coming up. Well, we've got our American City Coffee, um, and uh, we we always look forward to to American City's coffee, and we've got such great um, um, announcements that that are coming out of this today. So, obviously, this is going to be aired this evening, mm -hmm. so we'll go ahead and, and talk about it. But um, we have our ambassador of the month, which is Chelsea Adams, um, with the Tullahoma Utilities Board, and mm -hmm. and and Chelsea's just been a, a big help to us um, with with a lot of things with the ambassadors and we've really enjoyed having her a part you know of and Chelsea, Chelsea is I got to say this about Chelsea I have an occasion they're kind of our competitors but I run into Chelsea a lot out here doing news and she just does a great job for them and, and, and is a truly a great person so she is she congratulations, is so we're, we're, we're thrilled to be yeah. able to honor yeah. her and then also um, the 56th annual Christmas parade is is upon us and Billy Philpot is the chair, and the mm -hmm. co-chair is Lenore Blackwell. Again, this year they're 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 bringing their 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 organizational skills back, and then Christy Hayes from our office, of course, is is heavily involved. Mm -hmm. But we um, we want to announce the theme. Um, we've been getting calls. Um, I think people are thinking floats already. Yeah. So the theme for the Christmas for the 56th annual is going to be children's Christmas around the world. Mm -hmm. So now the floats get extra points points when they they use that theme when they decorate and of course we have the same sponsor stepping up again this year with blood assurance and first vision bank and tub and and gillum's outdoor and marine as well as traders bank so they're sponsoring all the awards for the floats for both the ceo and school categories the music categories and then of course the business and civic categories you know that's coming up in december but this will be on us before you know it it and will right it now, will really the time I guess you guys need to be it, planning for that. It is and, and there's so much that goes into this behind the scenes and, and like I said so many of our businesses we have a lot of our small local businesses that use the Christmas parade to promote their business mm -hmm. and so they're they're organizing their thoughts about their floats and 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 I think all of our our, our float entries have taken great pride in the the past three to four years to really really bump up their floats and the the music the lights I mean everything has just been you know really moving a step ahead each year and we're also excited to announce the Grand Marshal and so I will officially do that now but Chandler Lawson will be the Grand Marshal of the 56th annual Christmas parade and of course we know Chandler is 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 Miss Tennessee for 2012 and we are so thrilled um, to have her as the Grand Marshal and okay just, now you got you folks got to put this in perspective I mean there's there's a 90 
25 counties in this state, who knows how many cities Diane may know. Who gets Miss Tennessee to be the Grand Marshal of your Christmas party? We jumped on it, I promise yeah, you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So anyway, we're so excited and, and um, really, really looking forward to that. So we want to encourage everyone, the, the entries, uh, the float entry forms will be available. Everything will be available at the office. So just go ahead and call and we'll go ahead and get those out to everybody. Okay. All right. All right so now we're going to shift gears to the Tullahoma Marketing Magazine. Mm -hmm. And we have named the magazine this year and it's called Focus on Tullahoma. Mm -hmm. So we are anticipating, we, we are, everything's gone to the printer, so we are in anticipating its arrival in two to three weeks so obviously I'll be back on the show with with all my boxes of, of magazines to be able to promote our community cool. Lisa Claudio um, is our, our our board member who chairs that marketing committee and they just did a fine job once again on mm -hmm. on the Tullahoma marketing magazine so we're really really excited about that um, also we've got a government contracting seminar coming up on October the 4th it's going to be held at the boardroom at City Hall and we are doing this in conjunction with the Tullahoma Area Economic Development Corporation. So that is a free seminar being done by UT. Um, Paul Middlebrook will be here to do it. It'll be from 9 to 12 that morning. So it will be a very good opportunity to learn a lot about how to work through procurement situations and th things of that sort with the government. And so that's got to be invaluable to you if you are a business wanting to do business with the government. And right? you know, for a lot of people, they might not even have any idea they could possibly be doing business with the government. Mm -hmm. And this, I think, can bring some, shed some light on the many different aspects that there are. Okay, all right. Some great events coming up. There. We've got a joint after hours coming up, American oh, City yeah, Bank. Oh, yeah, don't forget that. That's, That's what I said. George Dickel, we will be down in the hollow on October right. the 11th from 5 to 7. And then we also have our next Chamber of Coffee coming up on the 23rd of October, which will be sponsored by Woodard's Diamond Showroom and Up tech services mm -hmm. and that will be at Northgate Mall and that's always a grand yes, time as well. Yes it is. You know you were talking about that Christmas parade though and, it, and the, uh, particularly as it relates to the Chamber of Commerce because I know you guys are, in, are interested in promoting business in Tullahoma and a lot of tax dollars are going to be generated during the December months here in Tullahoma. Exactly. And what a great way to kick that off. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. You're always just full of uh, great, uh, <laughs> great concepts, great ideas. How appropriate that I saw you picking up trash. I was just going to say, and today. I'm working on cleaning up the town as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wonder how, how you find time to, to do all of this. Oh, things. well, kind of that, that is a little challenging. I yeah. promise it is a little challenging. Yeah. And I'm not sure why in the chamber world that the months of September and October are so busy. We do have a lot of conferences, um, especially from the state level and things of that nature. But those are good. It's good to get out and, and network with your fellow chamber people and, and also, you know, sell shall we say, you know, spend time with the economic development folks from the state because they're the ones that are, you know, they're our partners in all of this and, and so it's good to be able to spend that time with them. By the way, you mentioned the, the Chamber Mixer, the Joint Chamber Mixer, mixer. that is with the Manchester Area Chamber yes. of Commerce as yes. well, so yes. it's a great opportunity to plug in with our, our neighbors and friends and in the Manchester To area. do business with our other chambers exactly. as well. Exactly. Diane, thank you so much for hey, coming. Hey, good to be here. Easy interview, folks. You just <laughs> <laughs> flip the switch. Diane will carry you through this one. All right, folks, we'll be right back in a moment with more living right after this. Look around, the changes catch your eye, and you come to realize one can make a difference. Since 1915, Kiwanis International has touched millions of lives. When you help one child, you help the world. But one can make a difference. Welcome back to Living. I've just had the great opportunity of meeting Frank Cole. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad Thank you, you came. And it was a delight to get to talk to you for a while. You're here representing uh, Christ Chapel. Grace Chapel. Grace Chapel. Here, Great. I've already got it wrong, but you know what? And let's just let you get right to it. What it is you want to talk about today? Well, we were. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm glad to be here. I'm grateful for the invitation. Uh, recently, uh, we held held a uh, two-day seminar. Uh, with a fellow by the name of uh, Stephen Armstrong. Uh, 
uh, here at Grace Chapel. Uh, we had the, uh, uh, the program recorded and um, uh, we felt so much of the teaching that uh, uh, through the work we've done with the people here uh, with John and Jimmy and some of their folks and, and Philip, uh, we decided to put it on air and we really weren't certain when we would have uh, a space and they really didn't know where they would put us and then uh, Philip called me, Philip Bailey called me and said that uh, we've got an 8 o'clock time slot open on on uh, Sunday mornings. It's been filled for years. It just came open. So I said, well, we'll take it. And so uh, we're, our, uh, the series that we've got is a four-part series. Okay. Um, the, the content is uh, it's a, it's a revelation-oriented series, an end times-oriented series uh, with a, uh, a focus uh, from Matthew 24, which is the Olivet Discourse taught by Jesus to his disciples prior to going to his trial. Okay. And uh, it, it's an exciting teaching. It does and, sound exciting. And when is the first uh, program? Uh, I, I don't know the date. I think it may be kicking off uh, this weekend or next weekend okay, on Sunday so it, mornings. So people need to watch for it. That's right. Um, our teacher is a fellow by the name of Stephen Armstrong. That, okay. that, that we've that, that uh, uh, just by providence and good fortune, I was able to to hook up with Stephen. He runs Verse by Verse Ministry out of San Antonio, Texas, and uh, we got on the phone one day. He was on a, on, a, on a missionary trip to Costa Rica. Wow. And uh, he said, I'm in the Atlanta airport. I usually don't get good reception here on my cell phone, but if the Lord wants us to talk, we will. Okay. And so we stayed on the phone for 30 or 40 minutes. And uh, uh, over, uh, you know, he, he mentioned in that conversation that he, he visits churches. And, uh, but the timing for me and some things I was doing at my work, uh, I decided to let it, it sit. Yeah. You, you know, I let it sit for a while. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to call this guy back. I mean, and, and I emailed, actually, I emailed him back and said, look, I would be nuts, as good a teacher as you were, sure. not to invite you to my church if you'll come. As it turns out, he makes these trips at his cost, his That's airfare, wonderful. his rental car. Stayed at my home for three days. There's got to be a nut not to know anybody to fly sure. in from San Antonio, <laughs> yeah. stay at some stranger's house for three days. But we had a delightful teaching. I can see why he trusted you. Well, <laughs> but we had a uh, 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 just a delightful, uh, actually, uh, three days together. Uh, the uh, like I said, the, the content of the teaching is is uh, a verse by verse look at uh, really a focus on the difference between the day of our Lord and the coming of our Lord. The Bible distinguishes between those two subjects. They're easy to get confused. Sure. And uh, he took some time to go through that with us. Uh, additionally, he actually came in over here to, our stu uh, to this studio with Greg Sandlin. A lot of folks know yeah. Greg Sandlin around. And they did a Q&A session here following this. So this series, it's, it's the, the two-night teaching is divided into three nights. And then following, we have the Q&A with Greg. So we're going to show that for eight consecutive weeks. And I'm not sure if it starts this week or maybe the next week. And but what, we're ready to go. And what time of day? Uh, 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 eight in the morning. Eight o'clock uh, in the so morning. So folks get up on Sunday and they're having their cup of coffee. And so they can watch it. watch that before they head out. And, you know, and, and how long is the show? It'll be an hour. An hour, an hour taping. An hour show. Uh, the... Uh, the teaching is also the teaching will also be available online at our website, which is www.gracechapeltelahoma.com. That's easy to remember. Yeah, it's easy to remember, and you can call my uh, your cell phone. my cell phone if you need it nine three one five eight one three two nine four three two nine four. That's easy yeah, to remember. Yeah, you can you can uh, get a copy of that at no cost. Okay, uh, but uh, so if anybody has questions about what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, any uh, I, I can be them. emailed at frank at gracechapeltelahoma.com as well. Okay. Make it as simple as we can. Right. Of course, our church is located uh, right off Jackson Street uh, in what used to be the old Trans Financial, financial Building. Okay, and do you all have regular services? Yes, ma'am. At what time? Uh, we 11 o'clock with other people? Well, we meet at 945, and I stop at 11, wherever I am okay. teaching well, through the Bible. Okay, whatever you're doing. You're so, and okay. we're going to stop right there. We... Uh, uh, we teach on Wednesdays. Uh, basically what we do on Wednesdays, we have an Old Testament Bible study. Uh, we're in the book of Numbers right now. Uh, that begins from 6.30 and goes to about 7.45. Uh, on Wednesday nights, we do a little bit different. We've got uh, uh, our kids are in separate groups with a teacher teaching them through basically the same place that I'm teaching in the chapel. And so you are always open for people that just want to come and check you out, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that's, the, some people that's might what the church should be, going right? On, and yeah. so the doors are open and there's the phone number if you have uh, questions. You'll get oh, that's good. Some yeah, answers great. there. Yeah, that's yeah, good. There Thank you. Go. you. Super, super. So how long have you been working in this ministry? Uh, we, uh, we started meeting as a Bible study about three years ago. I attended Calvary Chapel uh, in 
Murfreesboro for two or three years, yeah. and I did some backup preaching and teaching when our pastor was gone. Uh, he encouraged me to start this Bible study in Tullahoma. Uh, we met in uh, the, the landlord, the owners of that property, a friend of mine, and they said, well, you guys just come up here and meet. We met there with six or seven of us. And, well, uh, it's interesting. Now we got about a hundred folks. Because you used to be a coach, right? Yes, ma'am. Used to I'm be a coach. coach. And then, what was it that motivated you to move into this? Well, or as I you well, to do and, it? that's right. It's, it, and that's what we believe. We believe a man is called. The Bible teaches that men are called into ministry. And uh, just to, the, the short answer was, I was going to uh, uh, Murfreesboro to church, and was getting so much from it. I if just had a desire. Get, I wanted to tell home. You wanted to I wanted give it back. Didn't That's you? right. I wanted to tell them. Just like the folks that are coming in here in a lot of ways are giving back to their community. Sure. The folks we've been watching. I think it's uh, wonderful. A verse by verse ministry has a place in every community. I, I like the idea. And so when you say verse by verse, you actually dissect that verse. Is that the idea? We go. We just we try to teach through the Bible in context. We try to take a, an examination of the uh, the Greek and the Hebrew of those words. And uh, what was really the message the writer was delivering to that church or to those people he was writing to? And you have questions and answers at the end of your um, session each usually time? Usually, we, we, it's interesting about our church. People don't get up and leave quick. Oh, they want to When we get done, we just sort of hang more. out, talk, and have a cup of coffee or that coke. That sounds or good. Yeah. All Pretty right. healthy. Any last words? Because they're fixing to cut us off. Well, I see that. Yeah, they're cutting me <laughs> off. So, anyway, just uh, Grace Chapel, Tullahoma, www.gracechapeltullahoma.com. You can hear me teach. And, of course, I really just encourage you guys to, to watch our show and uh, Stephen's teaching. Fantastic. Thanks for coming, Thank Frank. Thank you, Ms. Betty. And I'm delighted to meet you. Yes, we'll be back with more of Living. All right. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hey, you want? Where are you there? I'm going to go. Five. 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 Shanti. Yep, Chang Yop Di. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs Sola. are making it happen. Peace. <laughs> Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding La around the world. <laughs> Rotary. Humanity in motion. Welcome back. It's Living, Marilyn Ewing, and of course, it's always great to be here. My favorite time of the year, it's fall harvest time. You may be very creative. If you are, you have your chance to shine. In fact, on October 6th, it's Art in the Park there in Shelbyville in Bedford County. My very special guest, Sylvia Pinson. She is the director of the Parks and Recreation Department there in Shelbyville. Good morning, Marilyn. How Thank you? you for inviting me. Oh, it's always good to see you, Sylvia. You're so busy. You, I am, you, you, but this is a new event for us in Shelbyville and Bedford County. Yeah, so in other words, you've just added to your plate. I added to, to our plate, but yeah. I, as a director of parks, yeah. is a community connector. Absolutely. So with a new event like this, we try to connect yeah. all of the not-for-profits. and Exactly. So this is it. Exactly. Because you've joined together. You've done something here. You've joined together with Our Town, uh, the Fly Arts Center maybe. And Correct. You guys are coming together to put this event on. Yes. Yes. And that's how you get a good event yeah. established. Sure, absolutely. Tell me about the concept. What is it all about? Okay. The interesting is to bring that organization, have a new event, because the arts in Shelbyville is there, but it's not, doesn't have a, a place okay. that we can really shine. Yeah. So Art in the Park, Arvid, uh, Harvesting Yourself was established, and it's October the 6th, yes. next weekend, Absolutely. from 12 to 7. Exactly. Now tell me what's detailed here, what, what's entailed? We're going to have the fine art, the performing arts, and I'm in charge of the stage. Yeah. Then there will be a children's section, and it's all art. Yeah. There's not crafts, mm -hmm. it's art. Exactly. In the parks and rec world and in the art world, the children love art, mm -hmm. and we're bringing this day to them. Exactly, exactly. And as we established the format, we wanted to hit all of the arts. Mm -hmm. So we have, it's a jured show, Yeah. so we still have booth space, and they can call, mm -hmm. and we can get them in the show. Absolutely. There are a lot of talented people everywhere in such, in Pepper County, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it's high out there on uh, getting good talent, those that, that, that can do that type of thing. So I encourage uh, people to come on out. You bet. We're taking a different spin. 
the, there's a new park in Shelbyville on the square. It's on the east side of yes. the yeah. square. Mm -hmm. And that park is called Our Town Community Park. Yes. So you're going to enter the gates and then you're going to walk through the park but behind the buildings of the East Square mm -hmm. of Shelbyville is going to be the festival. Oh, yes. So up on our stage that day, the dance, dancey dancers. Yes. So that's a performing. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to Cross Springs Band, which is bluegrass gospel. Mm -hmm. They'll be on the show. Yes. And then the Central High School Halftimers. I love them. Oh, they're great. I, Parks and Rec believe, and we want them there because yes. they are ab absolutely great. Great. There's a new senior couple that came in from California, you know, Evo and Ovo. Mm -hmm. They're little entertainers. Okay. So they'll be on the, the um, show, too. Okay. 2.30 to 3 is Ghost Ballerina Band. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go into the Chase Pierman Band, local mm -hmm. boy, yes. upcoming. Yep. He's, he was at the event last night yes. Yes, that we good. attended. Mm -hmm. And then our upcoming country star, fixing to hit big time. Yes. 515 to 7, Casey Smith. Yes, wonderful. Local hometown girl and doing yes. very well on the yes. music scene. So yes. That's going to be a real treat. Lots of entertainment. So something for everyone. All of this is absolutely free, I assume. Correct. Yeah. Free. Yeah. We have one of the photographer vendors that's coming and Parks and Rec. We're going to connect with her and we're going to bring some props. And then anyone wants their picture made, she will take that picture. We're going to charge a dollar, which will go back into the park enhancement. Right. Then once she posts the pictures on the website, the person can come in and enter our photo contest. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to base that on the different memberships we have at the rec center. Yeah, absolutely. And the winners will definitely go on the walls at the rec center. Absolutely. I'm sure there has uh, taken a lot of time, effort, energy into planning an event like this. You guys probably jumped into this uh, months and months ago. Yes, we did. Yeah. And we got good committee yeah. co committee chairs yeah. and everybody plays the part. Right. So it's showtime next Saturday. Absolutely. And we were decorating mm -hmm. Court Square. Yeah. And yeah. the park, oh, yeah, everything no will harvest, oh, harvesting yourself, Absolutely. creating itself. Of course, Bedford County has the most beautiful courthouse, I think, so, yes. in the area. Yes. So I have to brag on Now, you have to be, I had, uh, went out in the cornfields and cut the corn stalks yeah. before, and they've been in the in the garage okay. at the Parks Department. Okay, okay. So we we're ready to, to roll. We look forward to seeing that. Sylvia, I certainly want to um, kind of get you to toot the horn there at the Parks and Recreation Department. You guys are doing wonderful things. Thank you. Over there, and I understand that you've gotten a couple of awards. Oh, yes. So, congratulations. We just came back from the Tennessee Parks and Rec Association Conference. Mm -hmm. We won or re certified our benchmark program. Great. So, that's good for another mm -hmm. five years. That enhanced us preparing for grants, so which has been used quite frequently with, within our parks. The Henry Fellow Aquatic Award went to our aquatic pool. Yeah. And then I was fortunate, the 20... 12 Fellow Award. I was Aww. awarded that. Congratulations. Thank you. It yeah. was an honor. My children yeah. could not be there, yeah. but they wrote the letter, and I don't remember what I said because it touched me so <laughs> much. You just really, yeah. when you rear children, yeah. you just don't know the impact you have, mm -hmm. but when you hear yeah. it through yeah. it, that's right. I think I complimented uh, them for being a good boy. All right. And then I have to tell the world that we have a lot of children in our centers in our uh, society that needs other parenting too. Absolutely, so. absolutely. I appreciate you asking. Yeah, so, congratulations on thank all of that you. because I think that the Shelbyville Parks and Recreation Department uh, stands second to nine. I think that uh, it certainly We have a lot to offer. Yes, you do. Very high on the list. And we're excited that um, we were awarded everything. Yeah, sure. Keep so, doing those wonderful things. We will. Uh, we always love having you here and such. I uh, want to stress again, Art in the Park, it's coming up on Saturday, October 6th. Six. This goes on all day long, I assume. Pretty From much. 12 to 7. Yeah, yeah. So come on down, bring your yeah. lawn chairs. Mm -hmm. We will have some hay bales if you forget your lawn chairs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll be setting up it. very harvesting yes, atmosphere. Yes, absolutely. And of course, this is the first time it that is you're doing this. Time. So you kind of get a, a look at what maybe you want to do for the next year and the upcoming years and, and things of that nature. So it's all a learning tool. It is. And I think what this does to the community, it connects different 
different organizations yes. to come together yes. to bring oh, yeah. an event like this absolutely to our community absolutely and that's just saying everyone is getting along so that is yeah that is. so absolutely we salute you and all of the wonderful thank things you. that you do thank you right there in Shelbyville and Beverly County Sylvia come back anytime of I will let us know what's going on with I'll you, be okay? back all righty Sylvia Pinson that's thank another you. segment and we'll return with more living right after this Welcome to the Rose Bowl. The team's taking the field. Not many people. Oh, my. He missed. Uh, off to a rough start here. Somebody wants to go home. What's he doing? If you're not watching college football in HD, you're watching Pee Wee TV. Graduate to Charter TV in HD and let it all in. All right, we're back. We had a lot of people today. <laughs> yeah, we did. Kept we, us moving. I'm trying today. to get it all I in told my head. It's going to be a good show. Yeah. I'm impressed. We can impressed. have them in here. Yeah, we need to remind people 41A. Uh, event this weekend. This weekend here in Tullamore, uh, mm -hmm. downtown. The ghost event at the cemetery on the 5th, 6th? 6th. 6th of October. Valerie. Valerie, Buck Valerie Buckner. <laughs> Valerie Smith. Valerie, Valerie Buckner is at the 41A at the, and that's know, Pop Rocks. And, and, and I think there. that's Friday night. Friday night. Homecoming's Home. this Friday night at the high school. How are we going to fit it all in? I don't know. We I just do. <laughs> we just do. So you have no excuse to not have a great time this weekend. That is, that is, is absolutely correct. There is plenty to do. Absolutely correct. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. Thank you. That I'm was proud a nice picture. Too. It was. And, and well, well, very well deserved. Thank you so much. That, uh, that Jimmy was very Lou kind of Jimmy Lou to do that. She's a great artist, and, uh, you know, she, she did uh, Bob Carter mm -hmm. for me, and yeah. uh, we have his portrait there. So, does that mean I'm on my way out? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, hope not. <laughs> Could be. You know, we never know. Uh, uh, uh. Need to get, we need to get Jimmy Lou to do one of you, you and me. Fuller with a goat. With the goat. <laughs> One of the high high points of John and I's career. <laughs> Is at, it having at a South, goat? At South Jackson <laughs> Civic Center performing with a goat. <laughs> There's nothing I like better than a goat, though. You know what? You, you, you <laughs> Your performance liked them, I can do without. You wouldn't have liked them on that stage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they left, they left uh, stuff on that stage. Uh, you, you didn't want to talk about it, <laughs> did you? didn't want to talk about it. Hey, folks, it's about time for us to go. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>